Hello everyone, this is Salah from Vnugget. In this short video, I will explain to you what is a VPC interface endpoint. I will also show you an example how to create one and how you can use it to secure your AWS resources. So what is a VPC interface endpoint? It is a private connection powered by AWS private link. AWS private link will provide a private connectivity between VPCs and services hosted on AWS or on-premises. The private link will give you that possibility to create your VPC interface endpoint. The exception here is only for S3 and DynamoDB where you need to create a gateway endpoint. This interface will be exposed as an elastic network interface and will get allocated an IP address from your subnet cider. So the question here is how do you access that VPC interface endpoint? You can access it or use it through that IP address that was allocated before from your cider or if you have enabled DNS resolution on your VPC, you can use that DNS hostname that will be created to access your endpoint. This is our scenario. I have created a simplified schema for this. Here we have a VPC with two subnets. The first one is a public subnet that will host EC2 instances that need to be reachable from the internet. The second one is a private subnet. As you can see, the connectivity between the instance on the public subnet will go through the internet, whereas the second instance will use the VPC interface and will avoid using the internet. This is really a basic example. I have tried to simplify as much as I can. When you create that interface endpoint, you can specify one or multiple subnets. This is to avoid or in case you have any AZ service disruption. So before jumping into the demo, let me fix the objectives for this video. The first one is we will check the VPC configuration with the subnets, the routing table. We will check also the configuration for the EC2 instances and we will create a VPC interface endpoint and we will check the connectivity from our instance on the private subnet and to AWS services through that VPC interface endpoint. Let's jump to the console and see what we can do. Here we are at the AWS service console um, let me show you my VPC configuration. So this is my default VPC. I have used the default one. Um, you can see uh, about my CIDR here. I have three subnets. Let me show you the subnets. I have uh, the first one is a public subnet with the two private subnets. This one will host my first AC2 instance. I will use it as a jump box to access um, the EC2 instance on the private one. Uh, let me show you the configuration. So this is the public subnet. Uh, you can see the routing table um, using the internet gateway to access the internet. Uh, and the remaining options are kept by default. Now about the private one, you can see that I only have a local route inside my subnet. If I go into the routing table, I have two routing tables. The first one is for the isolated network or the private subnet. You can see here that I have only the local one and for the subnet association you can see that it is only associated with private subnets for the other 
routing table it's the reverse so for the subnet association i have only the public subnet and for the routing is only the internet gateway so let's now jump into our ec instances and see their configuration so it's basic configuration i have created two instances the first one uh, is internet facing uh, it is a public it have a public ip address so i will copy that ip i will use it to access that uh, ec2 instance and i have the second one which are uh, which is uh, hosted on the private subnet you can see here the private subnet um, let's now take a booty session and open connectivity to that instance authentication let me grab my keys and let's open that I see two this is the default user for every EC2 instance okay so now I'm connected to the internet facing EC2 instance let me grab the IP address for the private instance and let me connect to that instance okay i'm connected let me ex maximize this okay so now to test that um uh, that i can't access any aws service i will have to use that command for example i will use aws by the way this is the command line for anything aws let me use that command with EC2 namespace and for example uh, describe instances so you can see that I will get stuck at this at this level I will not go beyond that because I don't have any connectivity outside to the outside um, from that private subnet I will cancel that now let's go create our VPC interface endpoint okay it is at the VPC level okay endpoint and here you have a single button EWS is doing a really good job to simplify everything so here you have to uh, you have three options the first one is uh, you can specify EWS service that you would like to access the second one is you can you can create like uh, an application and host it privately inside your VPC and expose that as a service to another EWS account by using this second option third one is if you are, you are like to consume uh, a service from EWS marketplace uh, for our example we will use the first one and we will look for EC2 service I will check this you can see I would like to access that service and I'm on the private subnet so I will uncheck the rest so my instance the private one is running on subnet B okay I will let enable um, enable DNS name check it and now I have to create my uh, security group so this security group will uh, will protect your uh, VPC interface endpoint so you can specify who's allowed to use that interface to go to the outside I will create a simple group 
let me for example uh, create a new security group for example VPC endpoints okay and for the VPC I will keep the only one I have I will add it inbound room I will allow all traffic by the way this is not the best practice but just for the demo so everywhere outband all traffic destination anywhere and let's create that security group oh okay um v pc for ec Let's get something more useful. <laughs> Interface and find. Let's create that. Okay, perfect. So if I go back to the interface for creating the VPC interface endpoint, I can get this refresh it like this, and I will have my security group, the new one that I have created okay now you have uh, you can specify a policy so this policy will provide you with more granular control over who can do what on that VPC interface endpoint I will keep the basic so you can see that I am allowing all actions from all resources with any users and all you have to do now is create your endpoint and that's it it will take some time to for the endpoint to get created i will fast forward this so you don't have to wait for it here we are our endpoint has been created I will now go to my Putty connection. If you remember, I am on the private instance hosted on the private subnet. If I type this command again, it should work. So you can see now that without going through the internet, I was able to access the endpoint I will show you something else I was talking about that this endpoint will get allocated an IP address from your private subnet if I go to the endpoint configuration you can see that I have um, an IP address that was allocated from the subnet so this is the IP address for your endpoint I have my security groups and I, I forgot to show you also the DNS part so the DNS record that got created for your endpoint look like this you can even use them if I copy this you can even use them like this way if you would like to specify the endpoint name And that's it. I hope this was useful to you and please leave a comment on the video if you need to see something else or if you would like to have another format for the video. Thanks for watching.